to the Northern Soul Sisters channel or welcome if you are new. You have got myself, Ruan, today just for the introduction to this video. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Little Miss So-and-So Learn to Dress Make course and in this episode we're going to be talking about month two. So we have already done month one and you might have seen this already. If not, what we'll do is we'll pop the link in the description box below because the lovely Tamlin did explain in a lot of detail about what this course is all about. So I won't go into too much detail. And if you do want to check it out, I do recommend that you have a look at that video as well. I will just briefly talk about it. So we have been very kindly gifted a box each, each month, which is part of the Learn to Dress Making course. It is a six monthly subscription box and through this, you will learn how to sew a range of different patterns. And this is done in collaboration with the gorgeous Donna from Size Me Sewing. So it's as simple as that. I have my box here, ta-da, of which I have chosen a fabric for month two. So I know what's already in here, but not everything. So I'm gonna open this box with you now. I haven't even had a peek I know, on hard off, but I'd love to do this with you guys now so that you can see what is in the box. So let's get this open. It has this really nice washi tape Dalmatian washi tape on it. Love it. Yes, yeah, so this is month two. And every month you get a different um, one of Donna's patterns to start learning new techniques as a, well, either a new sewist or someone who's kind of gone back to it after a while or someone who just wants to have a look at some different skills here is the box it's all beautifully wrapped up inside look with some tissue paper let me take this out and do a bit of rustling okay let's get into this see what we've got oh and today i am actually wearing my t-shirt from month one i thought that was very appropriate so if you'd have watched the last video, you'll see that all three of us have made our own Florence boxy tee. And I love this. In fact, I wore it today and my mum saw it and she went, is that new? I went, yeah. She went, did you make it? And I went, yeah. She went, oh, it's warm and lovely. So there you go. I feel great about it. <laughs> right. Let's have a look what's in the box. Oh. Look at that. Okay, so let's talk about the pattern first. So this month's pattern is the Vienne blouse. So within this box, you will get an actual hard copy of a pattern. It's not a PDF pattern, it's the full printed version. Um, and this is a lovely little blouse. I will show you the line drawing. So it's got raglan sleeves. And then can you see it's a little bit different because it's got this um, little flounce as well on the front, super cute. There we go. And I think um, Tamlin or the, oh, my cat's just jumped out of a drawer, out of my interface in drawing my, uh, <laughs> my cutting table. Oh, I didn't even know it was there. Anyway, God's sake. <laughs> ah, I think we talked about the fact that, that everything is done by symbol rather than size. And that is kind of the ethos behind the name size me so that looks beautiful um and it says the vm blouse is a loose fitted draping raglan sleeve blouse that's a wardrobe staple the added front frill is a subtle detail that lifts the whole look and included in this is a free youtube tutorial for beginners and experts i like that so that's for everybody the other thing that you do get within this subscription, though, is you also get a bespoke video, not just this one here that is all about the VN, but you also have a bespoke one which talks about techniques and it's very good. I think particularly if you want to have a little bit of backup, a little warm blanket around you and you need a little bit of support, Donna is there for you and she's superb. Again, we reviewed the first months in a previous video, which you can have a look at. So I won't go into it in too much detail, but yes so the notions that we need for this is coordinating thread hook and eye or a press stud so you don't need too much to go with it either which is nice fabric type is lightweight woven fabric with drape such as viscose and crepe and skills to develop whilst making the vm blouse include handling lightweight fabric raglan sleeves bias binding and hems so each of the patterns it's really good because it kind of teaches you a different technique which is great if you are kind of just starting out or going back to it after a long time so 
let's talk about my fabric. Oh, look at this. Isn't it stunning? So it's this dotty viscose fabric in like a teal colour mm -hmm. with all these different coloured spots all over it. So you've got like a magenta pink, a pale pink, there's a navy, a blue, like almost like a limey green, a bit of yellow, all sorts of different colours in that. But I love that. That is so pretty. Oh, so you've got a length of fabric in there that will um, cover your size. And then um, I think it's um, whichever the largest size is in the packaging, you get that length of fabric. So I, in this one, ended up with a bit of fabric left, which was really nice as well. But this feels really good quality as well. It's it's really nice and lightweight, but it's not, you know, sometimes you can get viscose that's really thin. This is a really good weight. So it is very light, but you can tell the quality of it. It's got a really nice soft handle as well. It almost feels a bit silky. Oh, it's absolutely stunning and I love it. Okay, so we have the pattern. We have this fabric. The little notion that we've got in this one is, she's holding it upside down, a vanishing fabric marker. Now we always need one of these in our little toolkit, don't we? It just says on here, please try with a piece of wasted cloth before use. <laughs> please take off a cap with hands, not with a mouth. <laughs> They know us too well. They're like, ah, don't, don't take it off with your teeth. So yeah, they're always really handy. I haven't got a Millward one, um, so it'd be interesting to try that one out. And then we have our little parcel here. Let's have a look inside. What have we got in here? Oh, gorgeous matching thread. So you get also a ream of Gutterman thread, which matches. Oh, how nice is that? Your fabric. So, in the box, we've got the VM Bows, this stunning, stunning viscose fabric, the matching Gutterman thread, and the notion this week is a fabric marker. Ah, how wonderful is that? So, that's it from me. The next thing you'll be able to see is hopefully us reviewing the blouses. So, let's see where we get on. Bye. And just like that, it's made. <laughs> so it's been a little while for me, but it's been about 10 seconds for you, if that. But I thought I would come on first and show you the blouse complete. This is it. And I'm really pleased with it. Let me stand up and just give you a quick show. Now I've got it on just with my jeans today, so ignore that. But this is the blouse. We'll obviously take pictures and put some pictures in for you. But these are the sleeves. This is the little flounce look, can you see, that just drapes there and I have plenty of movement here and that would be really nice to out also tuck into some maybe some work trousers I was thinking. I was thinking that would look really nice. So it's done. So do you want to hear my experience? Anyway, let me go into detail. What we're going to do on this video is I'm going to go into quite a lot of detail about it and then the girls will quickly come on at the end and show you theirs because there's no point in all three of us going over the same bits of information because last time when we did our review we were lucky enough to all be together so we could all chip in but this time unfortunately we're all at home on our little lonesome so I'm going to go into all the detail. Okay so obviously you know this is what we've been making it's the VM blouse by Size Me Sewing I will talk to you as well about my sizing and so will the girls but other than that I'll be doing the rest of the detail. So I chose this amazing spotted viscose fabric in teal and I love it. It is beautiful. It's such good quality. When I open my parcel, I think you'll have seen my delight. Um, but from a fabric point of view, it's stunning. Now, the idea of month two on this subscription service is for you to start to learn how to handle lightweight fabrics. And I think we mentioned in the first uh, vlog, you get a video tutorial of how to actually make the garment up, but you also get a bespoke video, which is done by Donna, to discuss everything about the pattern and also the new skills that you're going to learn on making this pattern. And I had a good watch of that and it's brilliant. It talks an awful lot about 
how to handle the fabric, how to cut it out, what needles you need to use, things to look out for, things that maybe if you were just trying to do it yourself and you weren't going to classes as such, you would probably struggle a little bit with and you'd get through and you'd be able to do it all no problem. But sometimes I think when you have an expert talking to you about things, little nuggets go in here and they never go away. And I know that because I went to a beginner's dressmaking course and there's still things to this day and I'm nine years in that I recall from that and I still use it. So although we can just learn off YouTube and things like that, I do think having specific information from experts is a really, really good, useful um, and priceless thing to have, if I'm honest. Now, Donna in that bespoke video also talks an awful lot about ease. Um, and as a beginner, sometimes you don't really understand about body measurements and about ease in patterns. And she talks a lot about the difference between wearing ease, which is when you, how you like to wear your garments, how much ease you want in your pattern, and also what the designer's ease is in it. Now, she was explaining there's, there's two different things there. So one is kind of how you like to wear it, and one is how the designer intends the ease to be in their pattern design, which is fair enough. So for example, there could be a dress or a top or some trousers, and they want there to be a significant amount of ease in a certain area because that's how they want it to look. However, you might then decide to change that depending on what you want for your body type. So it's really good to actually listen to all of that information that Donna was giving you. And I would highly recommend it because it's giving you kind of some of that insider knowledge that you wouldn't necessarily know altogether. So I thought I'd just show you these. When you actually open up your um, package, you've obviously got your paper pattern that you can cut into or trace. I'm a cutter. Sorry for all you tracers. I know you will hate me, but um, that's just that's just how I fly. And then you get a set of instructions that look like this and they're on really good quality paper. Um, and this goes into obviously all of the details of exactly what you need to do. But what I also like about it is there's also QR codes on here to show you different things and how to do it. So um, if you want a little bit more information than what you've got on here, then you can go ahead and go and have a look at it. But there are instructions all the way through with pictures, which are fantastic. And at the top of each picture, you will see here um, a step number and also a time number. Now, this links to the other tutorial that you get, which is an actual tutorial of Donna making the garment, which to me is invaluable. I'm a very visual learner and I feel like if you are watching someone make a garment, it's almost like you're there with them in a class. Sometimes you can be reading instructions and you don't interpret them the same as maybe the person who's written them or you can't see past something, you've got something wrong and you can't see past it and it's quite difficult. So I would highly recommend using the instructions to test yourself, but also then to have the tutorial as a bit of a guide should you need to. I mean, you might decide not to even use these and to just go ahead with the actual video and just do it all from there. The choice is yours. That's what I like about it is that you've got options. So how did I find making up this blouse? Right. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I wasn't sure if this blouse was going to be for me. I was kind of like, hmm, I think this is probably going to be more of a work blouse than a casual blouse. But I am so pleasantly surprised now I've made it up. And that is, um, I suppose, reason not to judge a book by its cover. I love this. And again, maybe it's pattern choice, uh, fabric choice with the pattern. You know, when you have just like a little thing where it just comes together really nicely. I'm not sure if it's that or it's not, but I actually really like this blouse. It was, it was a really nice surprise for me. Um, but yeah, I, I love wearing it. It feels really, really comfy. And I'm looking forward to styling it up maybe with some like little loafers and some little ankle grays or trousers maybe for work. You know, when it starts to get a bit warmer, I can put like a big coat going on with it. I think that's the look that I'm going for anyway. But how did I find it? I found it great. It was a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be, which I think again is really good for beginners. Um, I think the particular skills you learn on this is um, dealing with a lightweight fabric, but also the neckline is bound. So you learn how to do that as well. Um, there are darts here in the sleeve, which I thought was very clever. So this is actually a raglan top, which I'm not a huge fan of on my body. However, 
these shoulder darts, which I've never seen on anything before, you might not be able to see them that well here, are a bit of a game changer because they kind of give you your shoulder. Do you know what I mean? Instead of the fabric just draping like that and giving you a sloping shoulder, it gives you a little bit of structure. I love it. I love it. I does. Um, but yeah, because it's a raglan, it comes together really easily. The only tricky thing I would say is the binding and obviously don't hold your hands through that. Now, if I'm being 100% honest, the instructions themselves in regards to the neck binding could be a little bit confusing. But what all I did is I went straight onto the video and had a good look at that and I could see Donna doing it step by step and it was like she was there holding my hand. So I knew exactly what she was talking about then when I referred back to the instructions. So that is such a good thing to have because not everybody has that and I love it. So yeah, so that was that. But um, the other thing as well that Donna does on the bespoke video, she shows you how to cut it out. Um, so because you're working with this kind of fabric, cutting out can sometimes be quite difficult. And I remember back in the day when I was learning, um, I used to have all of my fabric very skew with when it came to lightweight fabrics, but she gives you loads of hints and tips as to what to do against the grain line and the selvages, etc. So make sure if you do take this offer up that you do um, go and watch the video because it's going to give you a lot of insider information. The other thing that I really liked about this pattern is Donna tells you to hem your sleeves before you set them in. I love that. Before when I have set in a sleeve and then I've had to hem it, I always find that quite difficult when you go through the sewing machine and you're having to drag the whole blouse with you while you're doing it. You didn't have to do that because you're actually doing it separately. Spot on. Um, now I put my hook and iron slightly in the wrong place. <laughs> Can you tell? Donna actually gave really good instructions on how to do this and I still did it wrong. <laughs> And it'd only take two minutes to unhand stitch it and put it in the right place. But it actually needs to come across there so that it's right in the centre. Can you see? For me, it's slightly over. But to create this flounce, I thought it was going to be really hard. I was like, well, I don't know how she's going to create that flounce. How is she going to do that flounce down the middle? Oh my goodness, it's so easy. So basically, all she does is run a line of stitching here. And then all you do is you just put a little hook and eye on here. Ta-da! So you can actually wear it open as well. If I just bring that down slightly, can you see? So you can just wear it open. And I actually quite like that as well. <laughs> I think Rachel quite liked hers open from memory when we were discussing it. But yeah, or you can just get your little hook and eye or a snap button. You can put a snap button in and then it's all done up. So I was thinking this is quite nice maybe for work. And then, you know, you want to get a little bit cheeky going out for a few drinks with the girls or whatever. Got a little bit. Of, I would like to say I've got a bit of cleavage going, but I haven't. We all know that. But anyway, what else have I written down about it? Um, I think that's it. Yeah, literally, that is it. So honestly, if you are a beginner and you're a little bit nervous about working with things like viscose, etc., chiffon, that type of slippy um, fabric, I do think this would be a really good one for you to try. But I am super happy with mine. I was going to talk to you about sizing, wasn't I? Now, as we've mentioned before, Donna's sizing is fantastic. It doesn't give you a zero to 30 or anything like that. It gives you a symbol. And I love that because then you're not getting hung up about what size you would be in ready to wear items. And the good thing about this is it makes you measure yourself properly. So this here shows you where you are. Now, I should have been on the bust in between a squiggly line and the diamond. On the waist, I should have been right the way up here on the square. And then on the hips, I should have been between a squiggly and a diamond. But I had a good look at the ease in the pattern, in the designer ease. Um, and I decided that actually I would go for the squiggly lines because I was kind of in between the squiggly lines and this side here. And because it's quite boxy, I didn't need to worry too much about the waist. So I basically did squiggly line for the bust and the waist. And then I just graded out slightly on the hips to the dark, dark the diamond. But I've actually got quite a lot here. So I probably could have got away with just the squiggly lines all the way down. But can you see how lovely and billowy that is? I think tucked in. That is just going to look gorgeous. Ooh. So what do we think? 
I absolutely love it anyway. Um, and we will be giving you a code as well for a discount. So make sure that you check that out in the description box below if you fancy giving it a go. I'm already looking forward to month three. I have already chosen my fabric. I'm not going to show you what it is yet though because you'll be seeing that in the next one that we do. And now I'm going to hand over to the girls just so they can show you theirs. Bye. Thank you, Ruan. It's now my turn to tell you all about my bean blouse. And as you can see, I went for a very similar fabric choice to Ruan's gorgeous blue dashwood party spot rayon. I went for the pink colourway. And yes, I'm a pink girl at the end of the day. So I loved making this blouse. I am going to say that I did initially think... I don't know if it's for me. I don't know if this is going to fit into my wardrobe or my day-to-day -day life, I guess. But actually, I really, really like it. It's also a very, very simple make. I mean, you know, this whole series is about sewing for beginners and building your skills and building your confidence with sewing and working with tri trickier fabrics as you progress through the series. And as Ruan has already explained, part of that, process with this particular pattern is working with a rayon or a viscose which is what this fabric is and because this is such a good quality viscose as well with it being a dashwood rayon it just means that it handles better than maybe some of the more in inexpensive viscoses that you can pick up which can tend to be a lot slippier and a lot more shifty with cutting out and sewing this handles really really well it's a beautiful quality as you would expect from a designer like dashwood and yeah i initially thought as well that the frill detail around the down the front was a separate pattern piece and as ruan has explained it's not it is part of the front bodice pattern piece so there are actually only three pattern pieces to this pattern and it is ingenious how it comes together but i think what's nice about it is for a beginner particularly you've got this little extra detail at the front that I've not seen anywhere else in any other patterns to be honest that just elevates it slightly from a basic woven top and as a beginner I think you know for me I I would have wanted to look for something that's just got an extra little detail like this that makes it a bit more interesting to sew as well as you're building your skills so top marks to that Donna it's fantastic um now, sizing wise, I went for the size square. Okay, as Ruan has already explained, Donna does not size her patterns numerically to encourage you to check your body measurements and to measure yourself. That's really important and really key. I actually came up with my body measurements. I should have done the circle, which equates to a 38 bust and a 30 inch waist. We'll not discuss the hips because they're not really relevant for this particular pattern. And the finished garment measurements for that is an inch of ease. And I um, actually decided, having looked at that, that I wanted more ease in this pattern just because I wanted it a lot looser, a lot more flowy. I tend to like that with a rayon. So I actually went, instead of the circle, I went for the square, which is a body measurement of a 40 inch bust and a 32 inch waist and gave me a finished measurement of a 43 inch bust so I, i've got five inches of ease above my actual bust measurement and i love it i love this amount of ease so let me stand up and i will show you a little bit closer how it looks on me okay so i've just tucked it into my jeans so you can see but this is the finished top on me <laughs> i've got a fair amount of ease in here that you can see but um and it comes to probably high hip i would say i didn't add any length to it at all even though you know i'm quite tall and donna does not tell you what height she drafts for she does that deliberately because she wants you to measure yourself and measure your back length and all that kind of stuff so she talks through all that in her video that accompanies her patterns when it comes to constructing and putting these together but yeah i am um, i'm super happy with how this has turned out now ruan has already mentioned about the fact that the pattern instructions tell you to put a little hook and eye or a little snap just at the top here but i actually prefer it open like this i've not done that on mine 
because I just like the fact that this just floats and is flowy, etc. I just think it's just more, makes it a bit more casual for me because I'm not in a job now where I would wear this for work because I wear a uniform. So this is something that I would wear casually. So, and so, yeah, I've just decided to leave that off. And that's the beauty with sewing, isn't it? If you, that you can make things your own and either make little tweaks or add things in or take things out to suit your own style so that's exactly what I've done with this and I'm really happy with the finished top so a couple of other bits and pieces that I just wanted to chat to you about now I just use the instructions in the pattern to put this together I didn't need to look at the video but Donna does encourage you to do that especially if you're a beginner because that's where you can really see all the steps in detail about how you put this together. As you know, whenever I review a pattern, I am always completely honest in my own experience with putting something together. And as for putting this together, you know, I'm an experienced sewer now and I found it fairly straightforward, but there were a couple of points within the instructions, the actual written instructions, that I did find a little bit confusing and might confuse beginners even more. One of them was that they, that Donna calls notches construction marks and that's absolutely fine. I know that lots of different designers will call different elements of their instructions something different. I personally think it's better to use industry standard words and phrases, I guess. I think that makes life a lot easier for everybody if, if everybody's using the same particular phrases i just think that makes life easier so initially when she talks about construction marks my my first thoughts were what does she mean by that but she is meaning the notches so making sure that you transfer the notches and that you use the notches to join up each pattern piece i also find within the written instructions that the images that donna uses are all, not always completely clear because she uses photographs rather than line drawings and sometimes she's using quite a busy fabric it's not always easy to see very clearly what that actual step is telling you to do what donna i know that donna has really struggled with this throughout our having had conversations with her separately about finding a fabric that is different on both sides very very obviously different so that it's easy to see which is the right and the wrong side of the fabric that she's using when she's demonstrating within her written instructions. But what she does say is to encourage you to go and look at the video tutorial that accompanies her patterns because it's a lot more self-explanatory in there. So what I would say is if you are following, if you are using this pattern and any of those photographs are a little bit confusing to you, then just pop along to the video tutorial because it's a lot more clearer in that about what you need to do for that particular step. And I think then the only other point within the instructions that, again, I found a little bit confusing was that Donna, she flips from calling it by binding to a neckband. And those of us that are more experienced know that actually the two are very different. So it wasn't clear to me whether what she meant was, is this a neckband? or is it bias binding? Because dependent on where you are in the written instructions, she calls it different things. So I ended up using it as bias binding. In the video tutorial, again, it's very, very clear what she means. But yeah, that is just one step within the instructions that you might pick up and might wonder what's going on here. So I created mine using a, um, a bias binding finish on the neck line and I didn't top stitch it down from the outside I just hand stitched it from the inside because I just find for me it gives a much nicer finish I think sometimes when you're stitching bias binding to a neckline because you you are you know you're using fabric on the bias that's going into fabric that's not on the bias you can get pulling and stitch and distortion etc so it's I always find personally for me that if you hand stitch it down, you get a much more professional finish and a much more invisible finish as well. And I just find it easier. But that's just a personal preference of mine. At the end of the day, you do you and what's right for you. So I guess that they would just be my only sort of critical points about the instructions. But if you watch the tutorial, Donna's tutorials are fantastic because she's very 
it really is it's not like being in a room with a teacher although her knowledge is amazing it's more like you're in a room with a friend having a cup of tea and she's just talking you through it and it's so she's got such a lovely warming voice to listen to when you're sewing along with her that she's just so easy to listen to and explains things really well so it's a real big plus that you have that with her actual physical pattern as well but all in all i absolutely love this top i love the fabric i love the way it's finished and i think you know even wearing this with jeans as you see today it works really well on a casual basis and just means it's just a bit nicer than just wearing a t-shirt isn't it so yeah i love it really really happy with it so i'm going to hand you over to tamlin now to show you her finished vn top and we'll see you later and it's my turn to share my VN blouse with you. So I'm gonna start off by being completely honest. This is not a pattern that I ever thought about sewing or ever thought would suit me or be my style. So this actually really pushed me out of my comfort zone. And I think it's been a really useful exercise, actually. Chester always comes and says hi, doesn't he, during these videos. <laughs> I think it's been a really useful exercise for me in just branching out a little bit and just trying some different things that I'm not used to. So let's start off with sizing then. And I went for the third size up. Now, Donna does her sizing a little bit differently and she uses symbols to represent each of her sizes. My measurements put me in between the third and fourth size. So I, I'm not sure why. <laughs> I made this quite some time ago. I decided to size down and go for the third size. So even though my measurements kind of put me in between. And I think the reason for that was that I looked at the finished measurements and I was happy that there was some ease. Now the finished garment measurements are given for the bust and then the length. And I was happy with the finished garment measurement for the bust. So I thought, let's go with that. Now, in terms of how it feels and the size on me, I definitely think this is wearable. I think it works for me size wise possibly I could do with a little bit more room across here we've got the raglan sleeves here and I am quite muscular I guess and quite broad here even though my chest size itself isn't particularly big but I do have quite a lot of like muscle and I've got quite a broad back and muscular shoulders so I think possibly if I make this again and I may make it again I may not who knows <laughs> I definitely would try sizing up to the fourth size and just see just see what change that makes and just see if that feels any different I, this doesn't feel uncomfortable at all but just sort of you know when you try and analyze it and think is it is it the right size or not you know I think I could possibly go up to the next size but then I wouldn't want to make it too big so if I just stand up and show you I do have a lot of room there so possibly I could just size up at the top and then just grade back down to that third size who knows so like I said never really considered making this pattern before but I am actually really delighted with the outcome the fabric choice has a lot to do with that I think so we were given a really lovely choice of fabrics and as you'll have seen we all chose the same fabric in different colorways and I'm really really loving the combination of colours on this. I love that vibrant blue colour, it's one of my faves and I think it really suits me and I just love the, the mix of colours in this. So I think that that contributes a lot to how I feel about this pattern but it actually feels really great on and as soon as I put this on and walked out in front of the girls their reaction was just so wonderful. It made me feel really good and it made me think you know what I think I can rock this. <laughs> I think I would probably wear it tucked in like I've just shown you there but there will be some images that Rachel will pop into this video where I think you'll be able to see it both out and in and you can let me know which of those looks you prefer. I think I prefer it tucked in, I think that's just more my style. In terms of the instructions then, so you get uh, an instruction booklet with photographs that is pretty thorough, pretty straightforward however there are maybe a couple of points where there's a little bit of confusion 
but I think then having that alongside the video because there is a step-by-step -step video which Donna does a sew along for the whole pattern combine the two together and I think you'll be absolutely fine I did watch the sew along just to sort of check that I was on the right track but used alongside the instruction booklet I think will be absolutely great there was one step in the instructions that I ignored because I thought I don't need to do that and actually I did need to do that so it's step four in the instructions and it tells you to cut away the excess fabric of the darts and finish the edges and I thought well my fabric's not very bulky I don't need to do that because I thought it was to reduce bulk but then when it came to it later on and I constructed my blouse I ended up with the raw edges of the dart just flapping around <laughs> So I think I was supposed to follow the instruction in step four and do what it said. And I just thought I knew better and I ignored it. So yes, I do inside here have some little raw edges of my darts that I need to sort out because otherwise they're gonna fray, aren't they? So yes, don't ignore them, just follow the instructions. It's wise. One little thing about the instructions, which kind of just Mm, gets me a little bit is there are a couple of typos in the instructions and I just think with any instructions that have been through a pattern testing process I don't really think that that should happen do you I don't know maybe I'm being picky but I just think that instructions that have been tested should really have those things ironed out before they are released to the public but that's just me it, it made perfect sense I knew what the words meant but that was just a little thing. Maybe it's because I used to be a teacher and I always look for errors, possibly. <laughs> so in terms of having this pattern as part of the Learn to Dressmate course, it's your second pattern in that course and it introduces you to working with a drapey fabric and it also introduces you to a couple of skills like hemming a drapey fabric, like inserting darts, stay stitching and also inserting raglan sleeves so i think that as a second project it's actually really great and to be able to make a blouse as your second project is wonderful because it doesn't have any buttons or zips or anything it doesn't have any tricky fastenings it's just a really simple pull on over the head blouse but it's got this frill flounce detail to add a little bit of something so it's not just a plain and boring top so i think it's a really clever pattern to have as the second part of the learn to dress make course so in terms of month three which is the next video that you will see in this series we are going to be making another blouse but there will be different techniques for example sharing in that one and the fabric choices are going to be slightly different. I think we're all using cotton lawns for that one, so that'll be really interesting. So hopefully you've really enjoyed seeing our three blouses and hearing our thoughts on the pattern and how we like it. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed seeing it. If you are interested in the Learn to Dressmate course that we are reviewing for you, if you think it's something that you would like to get involved in, maybe you sew a little bit, but you would really like some step-by-step -step guidance, or perhaps you used to sew a long time ago and you're wanting to jump back in, or you are a quilter, but you want to dabble in garment sewing, if you think that this could be for you, then you can sign up and you can get half price for your first month. So that means your first month will be only £27.50 instead of £55, which I think is a really, really good offer. That is an exclusive offer for you, our wonderful Northern Soul Sisters community. So to use that offer, you need to use the code NSS half price so that will be maybe on the screen or in the description box down below something like that nss half price will get you 50 percent off the first month of this course which i think is really great for you to dip your toe in so i think that's everything that i had to say today you'll see the photos of us you can let us know what you think if you think they suit us if you think that it's something that you would like to try like i say you've got this lovely detail at the front here which i wasn't sure i would like but i actually think is really cute it's just fastened with a hook and eye here so you can just undo that which i'm i say you can do but there you go and then you just get a bit more of a relaxed open look at the front there so I think I prefer it done up, do you? 
let me know. <laughs> so yes, I'll round it off here because I was supposed to be doing a really short segment at the end because Ruan and Rachel went into lots and lots of detail and I was just supposed to do a short and snappy ending and I don't think I've achieved that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching our video today. We really hope you're enjoying this little learn to dress make review series and please join us again for our next video. Thank you again and we'll see you again soon in our next video. Bye!